ولكن هذا هو الذي يحصل على الأرض الذي يحصل and although they have a bad reputation in terms of temper and behavior and kicking and spitting but in fact once you get to know the camels and, and once they trust you they, they can be very docile very friendly and they are a remarkable beast <laughs> ولكن <تصفيق> كيلا <تصفيق> أنا هالكركرين أنا هالكركرين أجلك بس هو نظيف وعودك. You know our people are pastoralists. More than 60-70 percent of the population rely on livestock. And the Somali community believes the best animal you can keep is a camel. And our, our people, when they feel sick, they mix camel milk and urine, and somebody becomes healthy again, back to normal. It's widely claimed that there are lots of medicinal properties to the milk. It's a different makeup of the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fatty acids, etc., in the milk. And that's what makes people claim that it is much more nutritious. And that's another thing with camel's milk. It has a very high vitamin C content. So for societies who don't normally eat fruit or vegetables, um, that's where they've been getting their vitamin C sources and have been perfectly healthy all this time. effect of climate change. Once in a while, we have floods, but the number of rainy days are very few, maybe 10 days in a year. Actually, climate change affects more of the cattle than camel, because the cattle cannot stay more than a day or two without water. But the camel can stay for 30 days, or three weeks, 20 days, without water. It can survive very hard conditions. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
the other effect of uh, climate change is because of uh, many people losing their livestock. They settle villages where there's no jobs. So what happens? We are having um, youth that are no skilled but idle. Uh, crime levels has gone up. They're easily radicalized by Al-Shabaab. The threat is very high. They are highly active recruiting our youth. It's taken just in your next room, next house. They are with us. We, we, we are not in a very secure environment. So. أنا وحواية شن يتوان سنة عانق جذاي لا ما هذا الشيء وكوكر سنة عنتو وكوني وأحير ذات كلا يواسي الماي دوكسي إسكول ده لوسه في جواب وبح أنا محجرنا جرك عن أنا هداوة أقل كذا جوجا وكوكر جونا كامل has been our our mainstay economic mainstay from the beginning of life. But we are in the dark. Nobody knows about camel. Nobody knows about the milk. So that's why there's no investment in it. Most of the research has gone into the high potential areas of the world where you can increase food production. And the deserts have largely been ignored. But because of these added benefits of the camel's milk, it could well turn towards increased milk production and increased interest in, in camel dairy. If we can have a research that can tell us can inform the outside world that these are the benefits of milk, camel milk. I'm sure we can sell, uh, and uh, that will be very good for our economy. We have started selling the milk in the streets for a long time, almost two years. But we came together as a team, decided that let us at least move from where we are. And we came up with this initiative, Camel Milk Processing. We're waiting for the milk yeah, to come. So the distance is very far. Now that will affect you. You will not get the milk in time. And you can see in Wajir, the spoilage of the milk is 40%. 40. But but we have nothing else to do apart from waiting for the milk to come. We have no power. Our power is patience. From here, we move to the pasteurizer. Because if it stays for next 20 minutes, it may go back. And our people prefer fresh common milk compared to the pasteurized milk. Because it has a lot of nutrients. There are some sick people who have either diabetes or pressure, blood pressure. They prefer to drink the common milk. It's more healthier. I sell to the supermarkets, to the hotels, to the residents of the town, even the hospital. Some of the hospital staffs are coming here. Some of the county staffs are coming here. It has improved a lot in my life. My biggest dream is we must be out of this county to various counties so that our product can even reach the big markets. We want to reach in the time.
I lived in the U.S. in the state of Georgia for the last 20 years, and uh, I was a real estate attorney, so I can sell an ice to an Eskimo. Camel milk is the next generation dairy. That's what I believe. Most of the people are going healthy at the moment, and they believe that you know uh, camel milk is medicinal. As a result of that, a lot of rich people or middle upper class are drinking it. And mostly they are being prescribed by their doctors. We are working with the universities and also research centers. They come here every three months. They come and uh, take samples of milk. And uh, now we are working with the allergy doctors and lactose intolerant. Those ones, they are responding very positively. I think the body of research is now beginning to show the benefits of drinking camel's milk, particularly in terms of benefits to autistic children, um, improving behavior, improving sleep patterns, concentration levels. We've also done some work here in Kenya looking at um, diabetics. Although we couldn't prove it statistically, there was definitely an improvement in the blood sugar control. So the, the evidence is building. We haven't exported yet. But I will be very glad if I see my product on, on, on any supermarket on the shelf of America. That way I will know that I made it. Um, this is a photograph. Uh, we got married in Nanyuki and we had a camel at the wedding. That was how, how Sophie left the wedding party, was on the camel. From an early age, I was very interested in the deserts. During the teenage years, I used to spend a lot of time in northern Kenya. And then I ended up doing seven years research on camel milk production. So there's quite a long history with camels in the family. And uh, yeah, long may it last. <laughs> In terms of the global interest in, in camel's milk, it does seem to be growing. While there is a huge opportunity for export of camel's milk, then I think there's a bigger need for make sure it's better used here in, in Kenya and other neighboring countries where there are huge problems with malnutrition. On the other side, some of the benefits you might have heard is that it has a slimming effect, um, that it has good effect on cholesterol, obesity. And so you may find that it could actually also benefit nutrition issues in, in the Western world. Because of this long history of the benefits of drinking camel's milk, we're seeing more and more urban people taking an interest in, in buying camel's milk. We are in Nairobi CBD, actually, the central business district, a Somali restaurant. You ask for tea, they'll just bring you a camel tea without even asking. We have so many or rather different types of products being taken out of this milk, eh? camel milk. Eh? For example, we, we, we've got yogurt, we've got camel latte, which is loved specifically by even non-Somalis. Eh? It helps with my digestion and you know, you feel energized and you can actually feel it instantly. When you drink, that day you'll actually feel it. Like, it's a detox. With the human population growth globally, um, there will obviously be more intensification in terms of producing food for humans. We all know the, the impact of livestock in terms of being blamed for global warming. Uh, in some countries, there's gonna be less rainfall or, or higher variability in the rainfall. And the camel is gonna be one of the best adapted animals to, to deal with that. So really, they are an animal of the future.